The third law of success is the habit of saving, which will teach you how to distribute your income systematically so that a, def a definite percentage of it will steadily accumulate, thus forming one of the greatest known sources of personal power. Hill notes that the habit of saving doesn't mean the limitation of your earning power. Just the opposite. The habit of saving increases your earning power over time. The author makes much, much of this chapter about the power of habit, actually. So this is how you proceed. First, through the law of a definite chief aim, you set up in your mind an accurate, definite description of that which you want, including the amount of money you intend to earn. Your subconscious mind takes over this picture, which you have created and uses it as a blueprint, chart, or map by which to mold your thoughts and actions into practical plans for attaining the object of your chief aim or your purpose. Through the law of habit, you keep the object of your definite chief aim fixed in your mind in the manner described back in lesson two until it becomes firmly and permanently implanted there. This practice will destroy the poverty consciousness and set up in its place a, a prosperity consciousness. You will actually begin to demand prosperity. You'll begin to expect it. You'll begin to prepare yourself to receive it and use it wisely, thus paving the way or setting the stage for the development of the habit of saving. Second, having in this manner increased your earning power, you will make further use of the law of, of, of habit by provision. In your written statement of the definite chief aim for saving a definite portion of all the money you earn. Therefore, as your earnings increase, your savings will likewise increase in proportion. By ever urging yourself on and demanding of yourself increased earning power on the one hand, and by systematically laying aside a definite amount of all your earnings on the other hand, you will soon reach the point at which you have removed all imaginary limitations from your own mind, and you will then be well started on the road toward financial independence. What's the role of debt? Hill asks. He says that debt is a merciless master, a fatal enemy of the savings habit. Poverty alone is sufficient to kill off ambition, destroy self-confidence, and destroy hope. But add to it the burden of debt, and all who are victims of those, who cruel, of those two cruel taskmasters are practically doomed to failure. No man can do his best work. No man can express himself in terms that command respect. No man can either create or carry out a definite purpose in life with heavy debt hanging over his head. The man who is bound in the slavery of debt is just as helpless. The, the, as the slave who's bound by ignorance or by actual chains. The fear of poverty is one of the most destructive of the six basic fears described in Lesson 3. The man who becomes helpless in debt is seized with this poverty fear. At, his ambition and self-confidence become paralyzed, and he sinks gradually into oblivion. There are two classes of debts, and these are so different in nature that they deserve to be here described as follows. One, there are debts incurred for luxuries which become a debt loss. Two, there are debts incurred in the course of professional or business trading which represent service or merchandise that can be converted back into assets. The first class of debts is the one to be avoided. The second class may be indulged in providing the one incurring the debts uses judgment and does not go beyond the bounds of reasonable limitation. I think this is a very important distinction because most people that talk about debt talk about talk about it in too binary of a way you know you've got the dave ramsey's that said all that says all debt is bad and then you've got other people online that say that you should use debt and that's a huge tool and that's right but it's not a tool to buy stuff that doesn't make you money if you buy stuff with debt that doesn't make you money you will lose a lot of money and end in a really not good place so very important distinction. The making and saving of money is a science, yet the rules by which money are, is accumulated are so simple that anyone may follow them. The main prerequisite is a willingness to subordinate the present to the future by eliminating unnecessary expenditures or luxuries. The third law of success is the habit of saving. 
and in conclusion, you know, the, the way to think about this is just to choose an amount. Like, especially if you're salaried, you know how much you make set aside. It doesn't matter a hundred bucks a month, it, set it aside, but it'll build up and it'll build up and it'll build up. And then you have money if something doesn't go well. Um, if you're, uh, if you, if your income is more variable, then just take each a percentage of each check and tuck it away because over time you'll have, you'll have money that you have that, that you'll be able to do things with. So, you know, I'm certainly no financial expert, but I think this is a great chapter and is certainly a law of success. So thanks for watching and until next time, be good.